Masha'Allah, welcome to uh, the class on uh, uh, the Adhan, how to perfect the Adhan. Today, uh, as, as I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, we'll aim to go till about, about 10 to 6, inshallah. Um, and we'll be covering, uh, first, the most important thing uh, is, uh, is the correct pronunciation uh, of, of the Adhan and all the phrases in it. Uh, and so that'll be the, the bulk of the time, making sure we, uh, we have that and uh, going over any common mistakes, mentioning those. Uh, but then also as an introduction before that, we'll say a few brief words about the Adhan and about some of the, the hadiths on the topic and the merits of it. Uh, and then finally ending with, um, uh, with some of the recommended acts and etiquettes uh, around the Adhan. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. So the, uh, the Adhan is a, um, uh, first of all, for me personally, it's, uh, it's, it's something close to my heart because uh, as, um, as my story goes in terms of my, uh, my journey to Islam and my conversion, it was really the, the Adhan that, that brought me to Islam. The first time I heard the Adhan, I'd, I'd heard a few things about, about Islam before but I'd never really seriously considered it, but that Adhan, just hearing it, touched something in me. Just kind of echoed throughout my head for the, for the next few, few weeks and made me think, ha, huh, there's something here to this thing. Uh, and so the Adhan is something very close to my heart and something that I love to do. Um, does anyone know what Adhan means? Adhan, the literal meaning. No. Cool. You just did the intensive, man. You should be all up on this. No, yeah. Well, yeah, I was thinking about the root <laughs> letters, like what you know, uh, you know. Can I figure out? Can I figure out what the exact meaning is from the root? Mm. Um, but not really. Okay. What is the root then? Anyone? That's Three root letters. Uh, I don't know. But, to, to, to please, to allow. <laughs> right, right. So the root is uh, Hamza, the Noon, at the Na, um, which has several meanings. One, uh, one is Adina, Ya the Nu, Al Ivan is to to allow, to give permission, um, and uh, also Udun uh, uh, is another word related to that. Udun is ear. Um, because we hear the Adhan, right? And, uh, and uh, one of the reasons is it's, that it's related to Idhan could be said that it gives us permission to pray. And really Adhan, literally, Adhan in the Arabic means an announcement in general. Um, and uh, obviously announcing that the prayer time is in or that the, uh, the Jaba'a, the gathering, is, uh, is about to happen soon for the prayer. Um, and, uh, and so we find this, uh, this root mentioned several times in the Qur'an. Um, uh, when, it's, when it's directly mentioned, uh, this adhana, um, it's, uh, it has uh, different meanings in general uh, announcements. So, for example, we find in Surah at tawbah uh, Ayah 3, we find um, uh, a mention of, uh, of making an announcement uh, for a breaking of, uh, of treaties. There was going to be new treaties between the, the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Uh, and the word used there is Adhan, uh, as well as uh, in Surah Al-Hajj, Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, is told to, uh, to announce the Hajj to people. Ayah 27, Adhin fin nas. Um, and then, but then without the specific word Adhan, uh, the act of the Adhan is mentioned several times in, in the Qur'an, so therefore the Adhan itself is considered to be a, uh, a, an undeniable part of our deen, undeniable part of our religion. Because, for example, in Surah Al-Jum'ah, Ayah 9, uh, we find, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُورِيَ ذِي الصَّلَاةِ Oh, you who believe, when, when, you are, uh, when, when the prayer is called to, إِذَا نُورِيَ ذِي الصَّلَاةِ When the prayer is called to, and then goes on to saying what we should do, what we should do in Jum'ah. So it shows that there is a call to prayer, and then as well there's an ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 58, uh, that mentions how the, the Jews and the Christians, when they hear the, the, the prayer being called to, they make fun of it. Because they thought, some of them thought it was just, uh, it was kind of an ugly sound, mashallah. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's the, the Quranic basis for it. 
Uh, then in, uh, in the hadith, we find there's a sahih hadith in both uh, the collections of both Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, Allah, may Allah have mercy on both of them, uh, in which the Prophet is reported to have said, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace and prayers be upon him, إِذَا حَضَرَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَلْيُؤَذِّنْ لَكُمْ أَحَدُكُمْ so when the, the time for prayer comes, one of you should announce it, or one of you should make the adhan. This is a sahih hadith uh, in both Bukhari and Muslim. And then uh, there's a full story too uh, of how this happened. It was in the first year of the, of the hijrah. Uh, the Muslims were, were all gathered in Medina. And, uh, and they started noticing that it was, it was somewhat hard for, for everyone to, to tell what time it was and tell exactly when the prayers were going to be held. Because everyone wanted to, uh, to, to join the Prophet of the Simon and pray with him in the mosque. Um, uh, but it was, it was hard for people to tell exactly when. So the, the Sahaba, uh, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, got together and, uh, and started discussing what should we do. We should have some kind of announcement. Um, so a few people first um, said, let's have a gong or some kind of bell. The Prophet ﷺ heard them say that, and he said, that's what the Christians do. He didn't like that. Um, then someone else said, well, how about we have a trumpet? And once again, the Prophet ﷺ said, well, that's what the Jews do. He disliked that. Someone else said, um, how about we, we hit a drum? And he said, that's what the, the Romans do, the Byzantines. He didn't like that. Uh, a fourth option, someone said, uh, let's, let's light a fire, and then people will see the, the fire burning, and, and they'll know it's time for prayer. And he said, well, that's the way of the fire worshippers, the, the majus, and he didn't like that. Uh, a fifth option was, uh, uh, was, was offered, that how about we raise a flag, and so people will see the flags out, and they know it's prayer time. They can just look out and see the flag. And uh, this wasn't mentioned and uh, connected to any specific community, but still the Prophet said he, he didn't like that. So, so it, all the companions, uh, uh, may Allah be pleased with them, um, uh, saw that the Prophet, peace and prayers be upon him, was, was, was really reflecting on this and trying to think about it, and other companions were. But they didn't come to any conclusion that day. That night, it's reported that Abdullah ibn Zayd, so this was in Medina now? This is all Medina. Oh, okay. It's the first year of the Hijra. Okay, yeah, they're all in Medina. Yeah. So Abdullah ibn Zayd radiallahu an, has a dream in which an angel comes to him and basically tells him, this is how you announce the prayer. And he goes through the whole thing, uh, the whole form of the Adhan, which we're familiar with. Um, and then he woke up the next day and told the Prophet والسلام, about this dream. Uh, and several other people had had, 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 had similar, similar experiences and the Prophet ﷺ reported uh, that this was that, what he was given to. And so, uh, and so he told, uh, he, it was said that, that um, in, in, the, in the narration it just says that this is what revelation corresponded to. So he, uh, he might have received the dream, he might have just maybe Jibril ﷺ told, him, uh, told him something, it, it's not quite clear. Uh, the details aren't quite clear, but uh, this was what the Prophet had been ordered to do too. Uh, and so at that point, he went to Bilal عنه, uh, and, and told Bilal how to make the Adhan, and Bilal was the first one uh, to, to make the Adhan. Interesting point too, uh, that it said that uh, Bilal actually uh, had a problem pronouncing the Adhan. He, he had a speech impediment, whereas he couldn't say, he couldn't say the Sheen properly. He could only say seen. So when he got to Ashhadu, he said Ashhadu, Allah ilaha illallah, Ashhadu, anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And uh, later on, some of the companions came to the Prophet and, uh, uh, and, and complained about this, that he wasn't pronouncing it properly. But, but it's reported that the Prophet uh, said, uh, said that Allah has written his seen as Ashim. MashaAllah. So there are also several virtues listed. Uh, for, for the Adhan, um, one, it's reported that the Prophet ﷺ said that if people knew the virtue of being in the first line of prayer or calling the Adhan, they would, they would enter a lottery for it, if that's that all, they, all they could do. That was the option that they had. They would cast lots for it. Uh, and so it's something that, that, uh, that we as believers should be uh, striving, striving towards. 
uh, as men trying to be in the first line, uh, women preferably in, uh, in the last line of, uh, of the lines of women, then for, uh, for, for the men trying to, uh, to, to give the adhan and beating everyone else to it, some of the, uh, uh, some of the scholars say that um, this is one case in which normally as Muslims we're taught to favor others over ourselves. And some scholars say, except in matters of the akhirah, except in matters of the hereafter. So, uh, so, so it's said that one should never, if, if there's room in the first line or if a line ahead of us, no, it, it's best not to say, oh, you go ahead, you go ahead. It's best to beat everyone else to it and try to get there, obviously, right, with respect <laughs> and not, uh, not pushing anyone away. But it's, this is one thing in which we shouldn't favor other people over. We should rush to do these things. It's also said um, that the, uh, the ones who give the adhan um, uh, will have the longest necks on, uh, on the day of resurrection. This will be a distinction of them uh, that they get in the next life. Um, and there are a, a few other uh, hadiths related about, uh, about the favor of this. Uh, one other narration which we'll mention, um, uh, that uh, the, the Prophet والسلام, made a specific uh, specific supplication for the, the, the people who lead the prayer and who give the adhan. Uh, he said, Oh Allah, give, uh, uh, grant forgiveness to the people who call the adhan and guide the, the people who lead the prayer. And finally, um, it's also reported in, in a narration that, that he said, calling the adhan uh, for 70 years uh, will, will grant one, one freedom from the fire. May Allah save us all from that. So now, so as we said, the most important thing is, um, is making sure that we have our pronunciation straight. So this is what we'll go through, inshallah, now. So the form of the adhan. The first thing that we say is Allahu Akbar. So everyone say after me, Allahu, Allahu, Akbar, Akbar, Akbar. Auntie, if, if, you want to, if, if, if you want to be where you can see the board too, please feel free to, oh, you can, okay, mashallah, <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, okay, so, so this one is, is a phrase that we use all the time and we hear all the time, and yet there is a way to perfect it. So one thing, uh, a common mistake is to, uh, uh, in the Arabic there is a, a hamza that comes between u and a. So something that we, we might hear is, is, uh, is Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. But what, what we're doing there is adding, it's like adding a W in between the U and the A here, which is not a proper pronunciation of, uh, of the Arabic. It's Allahu Akbar. So making sure to have that glottal stop in between the U and the A. Ah. Allahu Akbar. Not Allahu Akbar, but Allahu Akbar. Say that after me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Great. Um, uh, another mistake too, and uh, this is uh, especially important in here, but now throughout all of, all of the words, uh, is, is making sure that we don't extend the short vowels like their long vowels. So the way I transliterate the Arabic is with, uh, is with a long dash over the long vowels. So you can see that here we have one long vowel in Allahu. So, so for this, it's, uh, for all of the long vowels that come in the Adhan, it's permitted to, uh, to extend it, to extend those long vowels, but not the short vowels. So sometimes we hear people saying, Allahu Akbar. Uh, Allahu Akbar. This actually changes the meaning quite fundamentally. Because when we go Allahu Akbar in Arabic, that we're adding, uh, we're actually adding an a uh to the beginning, and that means, is Allah great? <laughs> is Allah greater? Allahu Akbar. Right? So we want to avoid that. And as well, sometimes we hear people extending the last, uh, the, the last a as well, going Allahu Akbar. That again, it's uh, uh, it's it's not uh, it's not correct pronunciation. The one thing that we can extend is the ah in Allahu. Then finally, uh, and this is not quite a major point; it's a fine point. But if we're interested in really perfecting our pronunciation, uh, it's important for us to take this into account. Um, that um, uh, the best 
Arabic fusha, uh, fluent pronunciation we can have is, is that which will match the Qur'an. And one important principle of the Qur'an is that there are heavy letters and there are light letters in the Qur'an. So sad, bad, ra, ghain, kha, ta, va, these are all uh, heavy letters, which means that when specifically alif or fatha comes after these letters, it sounds like a. Ah. It sounds like a ah and not a. Ah. In all the other letters, it sounds like a. Ah. Uh, which is why uh, we say, for example, one of the, uh, there are two letters in Arabic uh, which we find in the Quran. One is sad, sad, we don't say sad, right? Same, and then, for example, qaf, qaf, we don't say qaf, qaf. And similarly, lam, we don't say lam, it's lam. So, so we have to pay attention that, that, uh, that we're distinguishing between when the a ah sound should be a ah and when it should be a. Ah. And really the distinction is when this alif or fatha, when this a ah sound, so translated as a or a with a line above it uh, in the English transliteration, um, when this comes, it should only be a ah if it comes after a heavy letter. So lam in Allah is a heavy letter, hence we say Allah. This is normally lam is not a heavy letter, except in the name of Allah. So, so the lam, so that's why we say Allah and not Allahu, right? So we say Allahu, but note that this, this A, this fatha, does not come after a heavy letter. And so to really pronounce, to perfect our pronunciation of, uh, of the divine name, the beautiful d- divine name, we would say Allahu, Allahu, try that for me, Allahu, 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 Allahu. Right, normally because uh, we, we, let, we let this lamb affect what comes before it. So often uh, what we say is Allah, Allahu, and that's acceptable, but to perfect the pronunciation is Allahu, Allah, Allahu, Allahu. And then we get to the next one. Note, we have two A's, two Fathas, neither of which comes after a heavy letter. So to say this correctly, it would be Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Try that after me. Akbar. 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 Now it's tricky because we want, when we have the ra, the, the ra is heavy. So we want to let that affect the, uh, the fatha, the a that comes before it. We, we, our tongue wants to say Akbar, but the, to perfect the pronunciation we would say Allahu Akbar. Akbar. So one more time, say after me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Great. Are you not pronouncing the ra? No, you are, but you're distinguishing it from the fatha that comes before it. So it's slight. Akbar. Akbar. Do you hear that ra? Me saying it? You slight, yeah, you hear it. It's a sukoon on it, right? Because you're stopping on it. Yeah, so Allahu Akbar. Right. Akbar. Akbar. Try so one one way to to work on this. It's tricky at first, but one way to work on it is to imagine that that ra isn't there and just say akbat, akbat, and that's what it should sound like akbat and then ra, akbar, akbar. Allahu akbar. Okay, that's without the ra. Akbar. Mhm. Allahu akbar. Yeah, that's getting it. it. It does, it takes some practice, some practice. Because you want to make sure that that fatha is clear from being heavy, but you also want to make sure that ra is really there. And the ra is heavy. I heard, I mean, especially at Lighthouse, uh, like you get all different types of advantage being called here, right. as you know. But whenever I used to hear you do yours, I just chalked that up to like your, I thought that was like a British thing. <laughs> I, I thought that like, because no. I was always like, the way he says the, the ra at the end, like I don't, you know, but... But so that's right. the correct way though. Okay. Right, if we're really serious about correcting our pronunciation, yeah. right? Uh, right, we will give every, every letter and every vowel its right yeah. that way. Right. Okay, so next comes
Okay. So now we have Ashhadu 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 So on this one uh, one common mistake we sometimes hear is uh, is not quite saying the ha that's here so it's ash and then ha hadu sometimes we hear people saying ashadu ashadu as if the ha, the ha is not there but that is a ha in the arabic hence s h and then h ashadu ash Hadu, ash hadu. Uh, another uh, another common mistake that um, that we hear uh, in several phrases of the adhan uh, is uh, is when there is putting a slight vowel when there's no vowel, putting a slight vowel when there's a sukun when there should be a sukun there. So uh, especially uh, I sometimes hear it here where some people will, will say ash hadu ash hadu between the sha and the ha they add a uh, ash hadu. No, just ashhadu, ashhadu. Um, and then ashhadu, Allah, 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 Ilaha. On the on the on the Allah, mm -hmm. the Fata or the Hamza or the Alif, the beginning is that a light in the same way that Allahu. Is? Yeah, this this lamb in only in the name of Allah is the lamb heavy. Okay, so down so here. so here it's just Allah Allah Allah. Okay, Allah. The first one is right. the same. Allahu Allah. Right. This is a separate word. This is a separate word. It's actually in the Arabic. It's two words combined. An and la, and they get absorbed to become Allah Allah. Then ilaha 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 ilaha. Then illa. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. So here we know that this lamb is not heavy, but this lamb is heavy. So we hear Illa Allah. So Illa Allah. So this A and that A sound different. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Right. And then we want to make sure that that uh, that the hat is there too. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Illallah. Right, right. Right. So now after me, the whole thing. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. One more time. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Good, good. And make sure to go, yeah, this is just a short vowel, so illallah, illallah, right. Okay. So the next one, once again we have Ashhadu. Okay. So now once again Ashhadu and now now it's Anna Muhammad and then so what happens here is um, is in the in the Arabic it's Muhammadan but the N gets absorbed into the ra that comes after it. So the way that we actually pronounce it is Muhammad al Rasul. Muhammad al Rasulullah. So these, these words are getting uh, absorbed into each other because technically in the Arabic, uh, noon gets absorbed into ra as part of proper tajweed pronunciation and then uh, the hamzat al wasl in Allah goes away. So we have ashhadu anna Muhammad, making sure that that uh, in, in our beloved Prophet's name, that we give him his right in saying muha, Muhammad. أن محمد رسول الله. So say that just from Muhammad after me. محمد رسول الله. محمد رسول الله. 
One more time. Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Good. Right. Law. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Right. The Prophet of Allah, the Prophet of God. Right. Peace and prayers be upon him. Uh, common mistakes here uh, is that um, so in uh, this particle, this anna here, grammatically it means that there has to be an a sound right here. Uh, this is a technical point because when we just say Muhammad Rasulullah, it's and we don't have anna in front of it. It's it's a u. It's a dhamma. So without saying ashhadu anna, if we just say Muhammadun, we say Muhammadun Rasulullah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So some people that gets ingrained in them, and so therefore when they come to the shahada and put ashhadu anna in front of it, sometimes we might hear them saying anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. They might think that's correct. But it's not. The correct is Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Once again, making sure that this ra doesn't make this uh, this fatha, this a heavy, because it comes after a light letter, the d, the dal. Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Next, we have. So first, making sure that we have a proper ha, ha, comes from the middle of the throat, which we might have to work on if, if, uh, if we're native English speakers. But hayya, 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 hayya. Once again, ha is not a heavy letter, it's a light letter. So make sure we're not saying hayya, hayya, but hayya, hayya. Right. Um, and then... Um, so, hayya ala ala sala. So the sad here is heavy, but that's the only thing heavy in this in this whole phrase. So, so the only thing heavy, the only uh, vowel affected by that will be the a, ah, the fatha after the sad here. So, hayya ala sala ala sala. So this one needs to be light, and this one should be light too. So, ala, ala sala. Ala sala. Ala sala. Ala sala. Right. Unless we pronounce, we, we do our Quran in Warsh, in, in the Warsh uh, um, reading of, uh, of Quran, when you have a lamb after, uh, after, after a, a heavy letter, uh, that heaviness gets carried through. So, Moroccans, uh, North Africans, uh, you'll hear them saying, hayya ala sala which is acceptable for them. If, if we recite in watch, then, then that's the rule that, uh, that applies. But most of us recite Quran uh, in Hafs and Asim, which is the most common way of recitation that we hear um, and that we're exposed to. So in that case, it would be Hayya ala sala. Ala sala. Right. Ala sala. Ala sala. Right, and making sure that we have a good ainda. So, yeah, approximated by this little almost uh, superscript C. Right, and then finally, a common mistake that we hear is that sometimes, sometimes we hear people making this final H, uh, uh, this kind of H, so making it's a ha in the Arabic, but sometimes they uh, we mistake it for a ha. So you might hear people saying ala salah, but that's wrong. It's just a soft H. Ala salah. Ala sala, the same kind of H that's in the name of Allah, Allah. But then next, in the next phrase, and this is why uh, it's it's easy to uh, to confuse these two, or to confuse this this kind of H, because in the next phrase it ends with the different type of H, the ha. So hayya ala al falah. After me, Hayya ala al falah. Hayya ala al falah. Hayya ala al falah. Hayya ala al falah. Good, good. Um, and then uh, one common mistake sometimes we hear too is uh, is in this L, in this lamb. Sometimes people, uh, I sometimes hear this of people wanting to extend that. 
and say hayya ala al-falah but don't it's just it's just one lamb ala al-falah ala al-falah right and then finally uh um, and finally once we're done with that uh then it returns once again to Allahu Akbar and then finally without the Ashhadu An we have La Ilaha Illallah La Ilaha Illallah so this is this is the form of, of the Adhan uh, now we have something extra for the Adhan of Fajr. For the Adhan of Fajr, there's another phrase for us to take into account, which is prayer is better than sleep. Exactly. Prayer is better than sleep. So, as-salatu, after me, as-salatu, 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 khayrum, khayrum, it's originally khayrun, but then the noon gets absorbed into the meme, so the way we pronounce it is khayrum minan naum, now this whole thing, khayrum minan naum, Khairum minan naum. Khairum minan naum. Khairum minan naum. Right. So, better than sleep. Prayer is better than sleep. Um, and then, um, finally, we also wanted to address the, uh, the, the iqama in this class. The, the iqama is closely related to the adhan. Um, anyone know what iqama means? Exact word. Uh, Take a guess. Oh. I mean, just to call everyone to the salat. I mean, that's the root cough, meme, and hamza or something? Close. The root is cough, wow, meme. Cough, wow, meme, or some say cough, yeah, meme. Right. Iqama, literally, it has several different meanings. One is to establish. Uh, to establish, to take up. So the most common time we hear this in the in the Quran, we hear it over and over again. Allah says, uh, "O you who believe, aqimu salah wa atu zakah." Establish the prayer. Aqimu. It's the same word. Iqama is the uh, is the uh, the noun from that of aqimu, um, uh, or those who establish the prayer. Alladina yuqimuna salah. Afwan. Alladina yuqimuna salah. Right. Um, so it means to establish, or literally also one other meaning, to make stand. So one, one shade of meaning is that when someone calls the iqama, that's when now everyone's going to stand up in the masjid to, uh, in the mosque to come to, to prayer. Um, uh, other, uh, other words on this, uh, on this root, mustaqim uh, uh, in the Fatiha, same root, seeking straightness, seeking uprightness, mustaqim, qayyim, comes in Surah al bayyina uh, meaning uh, upright or guiding to, uh, to something, right? Kutubun um, So this word we find several times in, in the Quran, right? So the Iqama, uh, there's a phrase that's added in the middle of it, which is So the phrase is, the prayer is being established, or the prayer has been established. The prayer has started. Qad, 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 Qamat, Qamati Sala, Qamati Sala, Qamati Sala. And another note too, anytime we see an I here, that's a, that's a Kasra, that's a Kasra in the Arabic, uh, perfection of pronunciation is making sure that that Kasra is not just an I, but it's a full e, e is in the proper tajweed. It's long. E. 
It's not long, but uh, but Kastra pronounced properly is e e. There is no i sound in in proper pronunciation of Arabic. Uh, so alhamdulillahi, we say not lillahi, right? So similar here, ilaha ilaha, not ilaha or illallah illallah. So here, قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة Common mistake sometimes that we hear is someone sometimes adding a vowel after قد. Sometimes we hear people say قد قد قامت الصلاة Right? It's just قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة Sometimes people also uh, confuse the, the T and the D, the Dal and the Ta. Sometimes قد قامت الصلاة Something like that. Making sure that, um, uh, that those are, are distinguished uh, is, is best. With the uh, gamma, um, so could could come at right, right. Qad qamati salat. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Um, so now, so this is the form of the of the phrases of the adhan. Um, now, uh, uh, how we put that all together, um, the standard adhan. Uh, we'll go through this order. So, so it will have Allahu Akbar four times. This is the, the standard adhan that we hear. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then everything uh, up, to, up to here, everything, uh, everything up, uh, through Allahu Akbar, the second Allahu Akbar, twice. Right? So hayya, uh, going through each phrase twice until we get to Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then once, La ilaha illallah. So just to, uh, to, to reiterate or to go through everything, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala al-falah. Hayya ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. And that's the standard adhan. Now there is a difference of opinion on this. So, um, so for the, the Maliki and the Shafi'i school, uh, it's, uh, it's said that, um, that it is, uh, for, for them there is something called tarji' uh, which means that, that they say the two shahadas, uh, they, uh, it's recommended in the school because this was said to be the practice of the people of Medina. Uh, who inherited this from the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, that they would say softly in a voice that is still audible to the people directly around, but not in a loud tone. They would say the two shahadas first. So it would be, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then, and then, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So that. So going through the, the shahadas, each one so twice. Like four times. Right, so each one, right, right. Um, so saying the, shaha, the, the shahadatain, the two shahadas, softly, uh, each one twice, and then again each one twice in a loud voice now. Um, uh, this is considered recommended in, in the Shafi'i and Maliki schools. Uh, and then one, uh, also another difference of opinion, in the Maliki school, instead of saying Allahu Akbar at the... Uh, uh, at first four times, they say it's recommended to do it only twice. So just Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, then once again they do the, it's recommended to do the tarjiyah, Allah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And then, and, then saying, and then saying both of the shahadas in a loud voice. Then finally, um, too, when we have this phrase, as salatu khayrun min al naum for fajr, that goes uh, after hayya ala al falah. So in fajr, hayya ala al falah, hayya ala al falah. As-salatu khayrun min al-nawm, as-salatu khayrun min al-nawm, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. And if we leave it out, it's fine. It's still an acceptable, uh, still an acceptable adhan uh, to leave out. <coughs> and then finally, uh, now for the standard iqama, um, adding qad qamati salah, now after hayya ala al-falah. Um, typically the, the standard way that we hear it is, uh, is um, each of the takbir of the takbirs, so Allahu Akbar and the Allahu Akbar down here, each one twice, and the qad qamati salah twice, and everything else once. 
So the standard way that we hear this is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala falah, Qad qamati salah, Qad qamati salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Um, once again, there's, uh, there's a difference of opinion. In the Hanafi school, it's, uh, it's recommended to pretty much do the whole adhan, uh, the whole form of the adhan uh, again, except add qad qamati salat wa alaykum salam. Except adding qad qamati salat. So for them, it's Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So everything twice and the first Allahu Akbar four times, um, unlike the other schools, which are pretty much everything. Uh, everything once except for Qad Qamati Salah, which is twice. Uh, now for the... I'm sorry, say that again, the, just because I follow Hanafi, so... Yeah. So, the Iqama and the, the Iqama are basically the same. Exactly. Except for two Qad Qamati Salah, Qad Qamati Salah. Exactly. Wow, okay. Exactly. Okay. And for the Malikis, finally, um, there's a difference too. They only say, uh, in that school it's recommended to only say Qad Qamati Salah once. Because this is the foundation, that in the Adhan everything is twice, and in the Iqama everything is once. So they say even Qad Qamati Salah, even though the other schools say do this twice, in the Maliki school only do it once. Is that clear? MashaAllah. So there are several, there are several etiquettes listed for, um, um, uh, for, for perfecting, perfecting the Adhan properly and uh, uh, we're going slightly over our, our planned time but we started a bit late so mashallah. Um, so for one, uh, first of all the general ruling on it there is, um, uh, if we look into the fifth books there is uh, really nuanced uh, uh, opinions on uh, uh, exactly what legal classification this is when, if you have a group of Muslims or if it's a person alone, a group in a masjid, all these different things. In general it's considered sunnah mu'akida. It's an emphasized sunnah. So something that, that we should all do. And, uh, and um, uh, if we're, uh, in general, if we're praying a prayer in which other people could possibly join us, it's good to do the adhan. Uh, so it's not recommended if the adhan has already been called, if there's already been an established jama'ah, established congregational prayer. Um, but, but otherwise, um, uh, it's best to do it. Um, other other recommendations. What, what about just like in the house with like, you know, your family, your like immediate family? So, so for that, um, many will say, uh, some will say, yes, do it. For, I think the important thing is to keep in mind, to keep in mind, uh, Wallahu alam, um, uh, but the most important thing uh, is, is just that this uh, is an announcement of prayer. And two, it's a powerful form of dhikr, too. So, so it gets everyone kind of in the, uh, uh, in the mode yeah. of, uh, of the prayer. And so even though maybe it might not be legally recommended, why not do it? Right? And it's a, it's a sunnah too, so it's not something that we have to get so detailed about. I mean, if we want to, we can look into, into all the details of the madahib uh, of the different legal schools. Um, and even if, like, say, you're going to leave this a lot, Mm -hmm. That you do the event also, or even if even if you do the salah, if if there's uh, if there's a chance that other people could join you, it's it's a good idea to to do the event, right? Um, and um, and it said too that the uh, the person who uh, the the person who calls the event regularly or who wants to call the event, it's up to them to decide uh, uh, to decide when to do it. But as for the iqama, it's up to the person who's leading the prayer to decide when that gets called. And preferably the one who does the adhan does the iqama. Um, so, so preferably someone will give the adhan and then they won't, anyone can, if it's time for prayer, then technically if there isn't an established person who's doing an adhan or the adhan isn't established, called at a certain time, then anyone can give it. But then the, the imam should give the signal for, for the iqama to be made. Um, so so there, are, uh, there are listed uh, uh, conditions um, that, that we should keep in mind for, uh, uh, for, for doing the Adhan. One is that, uh, according to most schools, that the intention is that we have the intention to, to call the Adhan. Um, also, um, that all the, the words happen in succession, that there's not a break between them. Um, another one is that it's done in Arabic, um, but it is mentioned in, in the books that um, the, um, if the person calling it, and if the person calling it is not an Arab, 
and the people uh, around who would hear it are not um, uh, also would understand that language, then it's acceptable for it to be in another language. It's listed. Uh, it's said in the book, so so it, that's said to be uh, uh, to, to be acceptable for us to do it, say, in English, if we're in an English-speaking country. But of course, um, we also want to think about the big picture too, in terms of uh, really staying close to the Sunnah of the Prophet, uh, having kind of that spiritual draw away from into uh, a spiritual language that we have with the Quran, that kind of thing. Um, once again, for those people who've uh, who've uh, who've uh, entered in the past few minutes. I'm um, sorry, we're just going a few minutes over with the Adhan class. Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be finishing in the next few minutes, inshallah. Um, uh, other, other conditions that, uh, that are listed are um, that, that it's done um, after the time has entered. One should not do the Adhan before the time has entered. There's a difference of opinion now about Fajr. Um, um, uh, many scholars say that, uh, that it, it can be recommended to do the Fajr Adhan uh, early. Uh, especially during Ramadan, to wake people up and let them know. Uh, and then some say that it should then be repeated when Fajr actually comes in. But uh, other than that, it should only be after the time um, uh, after the time enters. Um, also, one condition is that is that the person who gives the adhan is the same person. So it's not one person says Allahu Akbar and another one says Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. That's technically, according to several scholars, not considered a valid adhan. Um, um, it, it, is, uh, it is valid to, um, sometimes in some countries, uh, like for example in Damascus, I've heard it, you hear several people giving the adhan, but they're all giving it either all at the same time, or they all kind of say it themselves. So one person will say Allahu Akbar, then another person will say Allahu Akbar. So each one of them is giving his own full adhan, so it's acceptable. Though it's considered, uh, some consider it an innovation, but it's still considered acceptable because uh, each one has their own complete adhan. Um, there, there are conditions for the person giving the, the adhan. Uh, uh, that person should, should be Muslim, should be rational, uh, and, uh, and so capable of, of reasoning faculties. Uh, should be male, and then finally, um, um, some list an extra one of uh, of being uh, being valid or being of uh, proper uh, age. So the age in which in which salah becomes incumbent, which prayer becomes incumbent. Um, um, other uh, the the main reason for being for being Muslim and uh, and and sane, having having sound mind, is because this person, the person who gives the adhan, everyone relies on them to to give the uh, to let everyone know when the adhan is happening. So you don't want someone who doesn't care about the religion telling you when the, when the, prayer for, when the time for prayer comes in. Unless um, it could be said to, accept, to be acceptable, some say, when there is a Muslim who, who they rely upon the time for. But once again, now we're getting into uh, details that we don't really quite need to go into. Um, and um, and some, some scholars, uh, particularly it's said, some scholars of the Hanafi school mentioned that um, uh, that these conditions are not uh, completely conditions for validity. Um, so if someone who is non-Muslim or, uh, or, or non-male, a, a woman, gives the adhan, technically it's not fulfilling uh, some of the conditions, but it's still an accurate adhan. Other, school, other schools would say this is not, this is not uh, an accurate adhan. Now it's preferred um, that, that the person, uh, person giving the adhan uh, is in a state of, uh, of major and minor purity. Um, that they have, they're able to, uh, to pronounce the Arabic well, that they have a good voice, they're able to raise their voice. Um, it's, uh, it's preferred for that person to be facing the Qibla, um, but the most important, more important than facing the Qibla is that the people who are going to hear the Adhan can hear it. So if someone is standing in a place uh, and wants to make sure people hear the Adhan, and, uh, and in front of them uh, is the Qibla, but everyone who could hear it is behind them, then it's best for that person to to turn their back to the Qibla so that people can hear them. Although, to a certain extent, that's kind of a moot point for us these days because most, most of the time we have microphones or we're in small spaces, that kind of thing. Um, and so it's best to be, to be reciting um, a face in the Qibla. One other thing some scholars mention is, uh, is um, putting, putting the index fingers in the ears. Um, some mentioned the reason for this is to uh, make it easier for, uh, for, for the person to concentrate on their voice and project their voice more. Um, and then um, uh, another recommendation is on saying Hayya ala salah to turn to the right when saying Hayya ala salah. And when saying Hayya ala al-falah 
to turn to the left. And, um, and uh, three of the four schools, so with the exception of, uh, of the Hanbalis, say that this, this turning should be, should be only with the, the, the face and the neck. The chest and the legs and everything else, the torso, should remain facing the Qibla. It's ideal. Um, uh, just to, to turn the head. So sometimes, uh, sometimes we, see, we see brothers turning, turning their whole body. MashaAllah. It's, it's fine, but it's, not, it's, it's uh, said to be uh, preferable to have the, at least the, the chest and the whole rest of the body except the neck and the head facing the Qibla while, uh, while we turn on the Hayya ala Salah and then Hayya ala al um, uh, And then finally, uh, now it's, uh, it's recommended um, for the person hearing the Adhan to basically repeat the words of the Adhan uh, when, uh, when they hear them. Um, and so, so uh, saying Allahu Akbar after Allahu Akbar after all these fra- phrases, uh, repeating the phrases themselves, but after Hayya ala salah and Hayya ala al-falah, um, saying, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Because that person re- responding to the call, they're not saying, come to prayer. Literally, this means come to prayer, come to success. Right? But uh, that, person, that resp- person responding, it's recommended they say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And some say, actually, after Hayya ala al-falah, to say, ma sha Allahu kan wa ma lam, sh- lam, wa ma lam yashan, lam yakun. That whatever Allah wills uh, happens and whatever He doesn't will doesn't happen. Um, and after, as salatu khayrun min al naum for fajr, saying, sadaqta wa barart. Sadaqta wa barart. You have spoken the truth uh, and, uh, and you, uh, basically, you have spoken the truth. Sadaqta wa barart. After, as salatu khayrun min al naum. And then it's also, uh, though it can be hard to do, uh, it's also recommended to uh, to respond to the iqamah as well. Um, so, so uh, saying the same kind of thing after the iqamah, but when the phrase qad qamat is salah comes up, saying aqamaha Allahu wa adamaha, aqamaha Allahu wa adamaha. May Allah establish it and uh, and make it continue. Um, and uh, and and finally now. Um, the, uh, if, if anyone wants to uh, wants to look into more, there are more details that uh, that we're not able to uh, to cover during this time, and more recommended. We've covered the basic things, um, but uh, but one final thing is now saying after the iqamah, uh, there's, there's a recommended uh, 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 phrase to to say, um, uh, which the Prophet alayhi taught, taught us to say. He said he said uh, ask for intercession for me after after the adhan. Um, so, so it's recommended to say, Allahumma rabba hadhi al-da'wat al-tama wa salat al-qa'ima ati muhammadan al-wasila wa al-fadila wa ba'athu maqaman mahmudan al-ladhi wa'adta innaka la tukhtifu al-mi'ad. Some add that extra phrase, innaka la tukhtifu al-mi'ad, some don't. And in general, just making salawat on the Prophet after the adhan has been called. Um, it's, it's said, that um, um, said that the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam says uh, said إِذَا سَمِعْتُمَ الْمُؤَذِّنْ فَقُولُوا مِثَّ مَا يَقُولُوا ثُمَّ صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ When you hear the, the person calling the adhan, say what he says, then uh, make prayers upon me alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Uh, and it's also listed the, um, uh, the there's said to be a, a great reward and just prayers on, on the Prophet ﷺ in general during that time. Uh, and this is why sometimes uh, we, we hear people, uh, even the, the Mu'addin himself, giving the Adhan and then saying salawat on the Prophet. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, something like that, which some say is recommended to do to remind everyone of this recommended act of, of, uh, of sending peace and prayers upon the Prophet after the Adhan. So with that being said, um, are there any, uh, oh, one uh, thing I, I neglected to mention too, uh, it's, it's recommended that, that the uh, most say that the adhan should be long and extended and one should leave space in between each phrase for someone to repeat, uh, to respond to that adhan, uh, which is why we, we normally the adhan lasts long, but then for the iqama, uh, to say it without without those spaces, to uh, to say it quite quickly. Except in the Maliki school, um, uh, for them, uh, the adhan and the iqama are, are pretty much at the same uh, um, uh, at, at the same pace, uh, and it's said to to not 
to not really extend the aven. And one, one more note, um, um, it's, it's, best, uh, 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 it's best for it to be beautified, but not in a showy way. It should, we, should always, uh, we should always give the adhan in a way in which, uh, in which it really is a reminder of Allah and of our obligation to Allah and not a reminder of myself or my showy voice or that kind of thing. Um, so we should always be aware of that if we're ever giving the adhan, aware of the effect that our voice has on people. If people uh, are coming up to us afterwards and saying, saying, MashaAllah, it's a great adhan, SubhanAllah, hey, yeah, you're really good at that. We should be careful because ideally we should be in a state and other people should be in a state when, when we give the adhan, if, if I'm giving the adhan, then I look back and I see everyone just turning to Allah and, and seeming to be connected to Allah. That's the ideal. So may Allah allow us to beautify our worship of Him, uh, perfect our relationship with Him and everything that leads to that. Uh, may he uh, may he forgive me for, for any mistakes that I made in this uh, uh, in this class. May he uh, may he guide me and the rest of you to the best. And may Allah give us Allah. May he give us the best in this life and the next. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab nar. And then finally, we say the uh, uh, what we what we find from the Prophet Allah saying to do the expiation of a gathering to. Uh, to save us from any sins that, that we've committed during this gathering. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa, illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu wa ikhik. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله